This is a TS-100. It's arguably one of the best soldering irons or soldering irons, depending on which part of the world you're in, uh, you can get. And I know I've gone through a whole bunch of different irons. I've had a Weller soldering station. I have an IUA 968. I've gone through some cheap plugins. And yeah, you need some of them for specialized work. But for general purpose or hobby work, this is probably one of the best irons you can get out there. Uh, this one takes a barrel connector that supplies anywhere from 12 to 19 volts in its end over here. And uh, this thing heats up unbelievably quickly. I think that uh, I can get this thing, if I press the button to start, it literally heats up in, I'd say, about 10 or 15 seconds. It's a great, great iron. Uh, I have this one set at 300, and because the iron actually is an open source design, you can set what the maximum temperature is. There's even some custom firmware. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with this iron. I actually think this is one of the best inventions ever. Really, really love it. Now, one of the things that I want to do is to make this iron completely portable. And uh, I've been able to plug this into a USB adapter in the back and you get some power, but I'd actually like a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little contraption that allows me to connect it to the battery for my cordless drill. And for each of the manufacturers of cordless drills, you can buy one of these little adapters that'll slide right in to your cordless drill and that'll supply power. And by taking the feed from here, you can provide power to the iron. So there's a few ways to do this. I could obviously connect, if I get a, another barrel connector like this one, I can connect it directly to here. But I want to make it a little bit more portable and a bit more versatile. So I have purchased, and you can buy from Amazon as well, one of these guys, which is uh, the barrel connector on one end, and it has one of these XTH or XT60 connectors on the back end. These are pretty popular in the model car and model electronics business. And so no, the next thing is to try and see how do you connect this to here. And funnily enough, the spacing is about the same. And likewise, you can buy yourself a whole bunch of these spare connectors, which is what I've done. Now, these connectors have a solder or a solder, and I'm not going to keep doing that, but a solder end on each end. And I want to find a way to connect these in here. Now, I could break this off, this little tab right here. I could cut it off and try and get these two connected, solder them up. But I think it's going to be a little bit tight in there. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to make some, I'm going to connect some little terminals onto here, make them plug in, and then maybe just using some JB Weld or some two-part epoxy or something, just create a little frame that'll keep this nice and secure. So that's what I think I'm going to do. So I've gone to my junk drawer and I found a couple of these. Just slip on terminals that you find in automotive applications or whatever and they seem to fit perfectly on here. In fact, almost looks like they were made for it. Uh, and in hindsight, I think I'm going to break this tab off. I don't know if I have to, but I think I will. But I'm not sure yet. We'll see. And now the trick is to take this insulation off let me move all this take this insulation off and then put these on the end of each one of these I could try and do it with the insulation on I guess but I don't think that's gonna make much sense so and that's two perfect okay now the trick is to get these fastened here and luckily they kind of fit perfectly already uh, I'm going to have to find a way to hold everything steady while I solder this, but that shouldn't be a problem. Now the one thing is, I don't know if this gap is correct for these two terminals in here, but I have a way around that because these guys can actually rotate in their shell. And by doing that, I can change the spacing. So let's see. First thing to do is to solder these onto here. And I'm going to do that with the actual iron. 
So let's grab some tools. I'm going to plug in this iron. Oh, I plugged in the cable, which does nothing, so let's plug in the iron properly. There we go. And I'm going to heat it up. Here, we'll put it so that you can see it in camera. We'll heat it up to its temperature of 300 degrees. Here we go. And that's spectacular. I don't know how the heck they do that. Well, I do know how they do that, but I still find that pretty spectacular. There we go, 300 degrees Celsius. So, let's tin all of these parts. I have one of those holders somewhere, but for what I'm doing here, this, this will work perfectly. So, have some of this stuff. This is ancient. I've had this roll, I don't know, probably 30 years. This is the good old lead-based solder, which doesn't uh, give me a lot of grief. I have lead-free as well, but for this application, I think this is fine. So. Let's clean off the iron and let's tin this up. And we'll do the same with these. And here I think I just want the tin or the solder on the outside. No point in having it inside, so let's have a look. So now it's a question of soldering this inside here, and uh, given the angles that are a little bit cumbersome, what I think I'm going to do is take advantage of the fact that these turn, and just turn them a little bit inside here so that they're flat and I can apply some pressure with the iron. There we go. Now I can put these like this. I just burnt my finger if you didn't see that. Um, here, let's put this like this. And I can use the pliers to hold these. Great like this, and I can apply the iron and heat it up. So that should work well. Let's have a look. Perfect. Going to weigh this down a little bit, and I should really go and get my hold down, but I'm not going to do that, so here we go. Lazy today. Just going to get my iron full of solder for better heat transfer. Wait for that to get dull. And it's set. Good. We'll give that a chance to cool. Now you'll notice on the barrel connector that it's center tip positive and the polarity of this connector is also different. So you can see that there's a little plus over here, a little minus over there, and so we need to make sure that when we attach this to this little guy, we get the polarity right as well. You'll see there's a positive and a negative over here. So hopefully this is cooled down enough that I can touch it. Yeah, it's good enough, it's good enough. So let's see. And we're going to test this out before we, uh, we connect it permanently. Again, because these things rotate, I think that's going to work out really well. Let's have a look if I need to break this tab. I don't think I do, but let's, let's see. So I'm going to rotate these. One like this, and the other one. Similarly, like this. Here we go. Straighten them out a little bit. And let's see how they connect again. I want to make sure that the positive, which is the flat side of the connector, 
goes to the positive of the battery. So the flat side of the connector goes to the positive of the battery. So this will go like this. And if everything lines up, I should just be able to push it right down. There we go. How cool is that? Again, I'm probably going to put some epoxy around here, but this makes it nice and clean, nice and neat. Could technically leave it like that too. So, before we do anything else, let's see if this works. I'm going to unplug the iron. I'm going to take the barrel connector, which is here. I'm going to plug that into the iron. I'm going to put this on the battery. I actually haven't checked if the battery is charged, but hopefully it is. And let's have a look. If we're lucky, all of this will power up. And there we go. So, fully portable. I can get this thing almost anywhere I want. I know that this battery is a little bit flat, but right there I have a completely portable iron, uh, which is great because I can use it on the boat, I can take it to other people's houses, uh, I could take the plug-in adapter too, but if I'm working on the car or something else, this is just a great way of, of working and really recommend this iron. If you're looking for an iron that you can do a lot with, um, and it comes with different tips, you can get different tips, but I think this is a great solution. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put some epoxy on here and when it's all done I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, what I'm going to use is this uh, plastic weld, JB Plastic Weld, uh, not sponsored, just stuff I have lying around. Um, I could leave it as it is, I could also use hot glue, but I think I'm going to use this stuff, it's just going to make it a little bit stronger. And what I might do is tape the edges down so I don't make a mess of, of everything because this stuff is pretty tacky. Okay. Don't think I'm going to need a lot, so I'll just cut a little piece off here. That should do it. This stuff is great. Fix everything with it. So fix the boat. There we go. The only thing you got to do is make sure that you put the rest away. And I always do it face side down so that it's sealed. And then you've got to take off the little plastic coating on here. There it is. And then you've got to make sure you really, really mix it well. So this will take some time. I'll spare you the details. And you'll see it all nicely mixed at the end. And once it's thoroughly mixed, we're going to shove it into the hole. So I'm going to use a stick to just push this stuff in there. Make sure that it's nicely inside that gap, that opening. And then we're going to cut off the excess before it hardens. So, I think we'll just do this. There we go. That's garbage. Now I'll just smooth this out a little bit. And again, that's just for the heck, heck of it. Don't really need to do that. Okay, we'll let it dry, then we'll take the tape off, and we should be good to go. So depending on the size battery you can do different things and I have more of these because I think they're a good thing to have around. 
think if you're going to be doing this kind of work, you can uh, you can do it. Anyway, that's for this one. It's not quite dry, but it'll be okay. And there you have it. A fully portable TS-100 soldering or soldering iron. It's a really useful thing. Thanks for watching.